Hi everyone, Anne from Imagine If here with another early literacy class for preschoolers. Today I headed to a lake and all my books are about water. I decided to do a video like Becca did in her recent early literacy class when she read books while hiking at Lone Pine State Park. And I headed to Spoon Lake for this story time. So here I am at a swimming hole at Spoon Lake. There's another public access you can drive to over behind me there. But to get here where I am requires about a mile hike in National Forest. I thought I would read my first book here on land near the swimming hole in the lake where we would learn about other names for places where water and land meet. This book is neat because all the pages have creative cutouts. Well, you'll see. Water Land, Land and Water Forms Around the World by Christy Hale. And papers are blue, like water. Oops, and these end papers are tan, like land. There goes our dog into the water. Water, land, lake. See that cut out there? Island. Bay. In the water shaped like that. It's a bay. Ooh. And when the land is shaped like that, it's called a cape. A strait. And the water goes like that. Between two pieces of land and an isthmus when the land does the same thing. It's like a land bridge. Oh, here's a system of lakes. Like where we live. And it's a system of islands. It's called an archipelago. A gulf even bigger. See, there's a town way over there. That's a big bay. It's called the Gulf. And a big piece of land, that same shape as a peninsula. And now, okay, this next page is so big I had to back up. It's going to show us all the parts we just all the parts we just learned, system of lakes, gulf, isthmus, cape, but then bigger ones like the ocean, the continents, archipelago, bay, there's a peninsula, there's a lake, there's a strait. And there's Spoon Lake. Yay! I love the way the cutouts on the pages were land on one side with a specific name. And then with the turn of the page, we got to see the form of water that's the same shape, but with its special water name. My next book requires some gear. I brought a life jacket and some paddles. And I borrowed my neighbor's canoe. And my neighbor's dog came with us. <laughs> so I have our dog, my husband, and our neighbor's dog and our neighbor's canoe and we're going to go out and read one dog canoe uh, my dog is too old to want to jump into the canoe but she'll fish nearby she loves that so this will actually be a two-person canoe with two dogs on the side as we read one dog canoe One Dog Canoe by Mary Casanova, pictures by Ard Hoyt. I set off one morning in my little red canoe. My dog wagged his tail. Can I come too? 
You bet, I said. A trip for two. Just me and you. <laughs> what could go wrong? I dip my paddle into ribbons of blue. Beaver stopped chewing. Could I come too? Well, there's not much room. It's a one-dog canoe, but with a slap and a swim, Beaver scrambled in. I swished past ferns where dragonflies flew. Loon stretched her wings. Can I come too? I tell you'll fit. It's a one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a woo woo flap, Loon landed in my lap. Silently we glided under silver webs of dew. Wolf peered from the pines. Can I come too? Maybe next time. It's a one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But, like an arrow on the wind, wolf bounded in. Still I paddled on in my little red canoe. Bear slid down a tree. Can I come too? <gasps> We're pretty darn full. It's a one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a grunt, thump, kawump, Bear dropped on his rump. I J-stroked and C-stroked. What else could I do? Moose lifted his head. Can I come too? You'll do us all in. It's a one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. <laughs> but with a toss of his rack, Moose climbed in the back. We teetered, we tottered. I glared at my crew. Frog. Hop to a rock. Herb, can I come too? Frog, can't you see? It's a one moose, one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a leap. Plop. Swish a bang flop. We sputtered, we splashed, we swam, drip dried on the sand. Sorry, Beaver said, we should have listened to you. Guess you were right, it's a one dog canoe. I started to grin. It's okay, we had a good swim. Then together we bailed till my vessel was dry. With a push, a swoosh glide, we waved goodbye. I set off that evening at the northern lights grew. Just me and my pal in a one dog canoe. I loved reading that story while floating around in a real canoe. Also, all those animals live on this lake, or they could, although none have ever asked to ride in the canoe, except for maybe Lucy. We've seen osprey, turtles, and herons here too. There's a family of loons that nest here each year, and once there was a moose-eating brush right at the swimming hole, and my husband and daughter had to stay out swimming around on floaty toys until it left. They got pretty cold. Luckily, the coast is clear right now. We are heading back to shore, and looking down into that clear water reminds me of the next thing I want to do. When we meet at the library in person, after we read books, we always have fun activities set up for you to do. I hope that you have gotten a chance to play in water this summer. Before we leave Spoon Lake, I want to show you the water viewers I made. 
This is an activity from Beanstack, the Imaginif's summer experience program. So besides getting to look underwater, making and using it will help earn you real prizes. Here I am using my water viewer. And here is some video I took so you can see what it looks like through the viewer. The flexible plastic in the bottom acts like a magnifying glass as well as allowing us to see below the water. I used my underwater camera just in case I dropped it. Hey, I wonder what I look like to the fish. I think it works both ways. Here is a quick video of how I made my viewers. I made one with a can and one from a giant yogurt container. Definitely a craft for adults with needing to cut holes in the plastic. If I were to make them again, I would trim off the extra clear plastic wrap. The way I left it long allowed it to float around. Sometimes it floated into my view. Okay, time to head home. I sure had fun at the lake. Maybe you can tell me about the fun activities you do to beat the heat, even if you're not on a lake or a river or a bay or a strait or a gulf. <laughs> Bye till next time.